Hello again. Ready to go at it again? Let's go find all that stuff we missed before. Now I'm gonna feel a little dirty doing this, but I'm gonna press the space bar. Ugh. Breathtaking, isn't it? Hey, at least I caught her saying that. That's one thing I didn't get before. Now, go away. We... Breathtaking, isn't it? Now you have to do two things in the study in order to trigger the next cutscene. One of the things you have to do is you have to zoom in on the Relishon book here. And you also have to stand over on this note over here. It doesn't matter which order you do those two things. And you don't actually have to look at anything over here either. But the next time we stand over by the Relishon book, the next cutscene will begin with Atris and later Savidro. But we are going to look at some things over here because we're hunting for easter eggs. There are six easter eggs in this game total, and the first one is right here on the desk. Now, when I click right here normally, I get a close-up picture of the two actresses that played Catherine and Yisha. However, if I hold down the tilde key, or whatever that's called right below the escape key, if I hold that down while I zoom in, I get another picture of the two equally talented actresses. Now that tilde key is going to be our universal easter egg hotkey. You have to hold it down to trigger any of the eggs. It's weird for me because I'm used to that being my video capture hotkey, so I'm gonna have to get used to that being somewhere else now. And of course, just as I say all that, the next thing we have to do here doesn't require the tilde key. I guess that's because this just unlocks the egg. The actual egg is somewhere else. Now according to my source, you're supposed to click on this pepper shaker here. Even though to me it's obviously an ink bottle. But I guess I'll go ahead and use their term and call it a pepper shaker. But it's really an ink bottle. Anyway, you don't have to hold the tilde key when you click it. And when you do, it just zooms out and it doesn't look like you did anything. But I did verify that you have to click in that spot. I made a test run where I clicked right next to it and it didn't work. Well, my friend, I see you found the release on book. Catherine tell So you ever wonder what happens if you don't click on the book here? Maybe the house burns down and we get another bad ending? Nope. Oh yeah, I can skip this too. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and take it. Actually, I do need to follow you because there's another Easter egg up here. Okay. The second Easter egg is right here at the door. You just hold the Easter egg key down and zoom in on the window. And you get a normal clip of Savidro walking around. Yeah. Even with the Easter egg key held down, it's still random whether or not you actually get the Easter egg. So I don't know how long this is gonna take. Donk. That was it. That was the whole thing. We're actually kind of lucky getting it in just four tries. And by the way, that had nothing to do with a pepper bottle. That actually comes into play on the next egg. And for that, we're gonna have to partially solve the voltaic light beam puzzle. Come on. The light gun has eight different positions and starts on the opposite side of the wheel. So you gotta rotate it four times one way or the other. Now we have to set up the first few of these, but fortunately we don't have to go all the way around.
You'll notice in my LP that the music wasn't playing during my first tour around Jananin. That's because I forgot to install the patch. Whoops. Even though I had set the music frequency option to maximum, there's some glitch in the old version that causes the music to fade out anyway. And even worse, once the music fades out in that version, it never returns. It's a good thing the patch fixes all that. I installed it at the same time I changed my mic setup in part 7. Okay, so this light beam needs to be facing me. If you want to memorize the solution without looking through any of the telescopes, just remember this red one and the next yellow one need to be turned twice, and all the others only once. But I'm not going to do any of that now. I'm going to turn this only once because the egg is here. See, the whole point of this is to get the light to shine on this rock over here, which means now I just need to hold down the tilde key and advance forward. Well, that's what you're supposed to do, but I don't see anything unusual here, so I guess I did it wrong. Maybe I clicked on the wrong ink shaker. Oh well, I don't know. I guess I'll just move on to the next thing. It is a little weird that almost all the eggs are right here at the beginning. I hate to think these are just the only ones found because no one ever looked much further. Well, I guess it isn't that hard to play the whole game with a tilde key held down, so yeah, these are probably all of them. Hey look, I get to open this from the left side now. This next egg is found behind Savidro's cot. Now there's his diary, but we're not going to need it for this. We need to look back here. But we can't. Wait a minute. What if I hold down the tilde key? Aha! We get a giant Pez dispenser. Or a Meb dispenser. I have heard that the lead art designer, Mike Brown, has a lot of those. Okay, there's one more up the elevator here. Even if you enter the right combination in the elevator shaft down there, the elevator won't rotate until you pick up Savidro's journal. That's so you don't pick up any journal pages without a journal to put them in. It really is something to think about all the combinations possible between the elevator, the doors upstairs, and the Narayan book cage. They had to render and test a huge number of still shots and bink files, many of which are so inconvenient to find, most players have probably never even seen them. Atris? Is that you? Atris? Is that you? Skip it. So what's he doing here? Screwing up the Donna telescope? Oh, sorry, mouse. So I'm sure you already know what's next. Till the time. Aw, oh, man. This is another one of those randomly generated eggs. Not that again. Okay, hopefully this is it. Come on!
Well, I guess the last time I said four wasn't that bad, so might have to do this a few more times. At least you get a full sample of all the other walking animations. I'm starting to wonder if this even requires the tilde key. Maybe it's just random and whoever's persistent enough gets to see it. Of course, I'm never going to test that. This is already trying my patience. The only reason I haven't given up already is that I have seen it before. Of course, it didn't take this many tries. I think he's walking back and forth between the left and right sides of the room, so half these attempts might be pointless actually. Yep. That was... that was it. Not exactly an opera, but that's what we've been waiting for this whole time. Now the last egg is a bit later in the game, so I went ahead and created a separate saved game for it. Don't worry about those other games, they're for something else. This isn't exactly where the egg is. This is the spot where that one log runs into that other log. The second log is actually a spiral that goes all the way around. Not sure if I ever showed that clearly before. Now I kind of hinted at this in both my LP and the commentary series. I said it didn't appear special, but I said it in kind of a suspicious way. Did that not raise any eyebrows? Do you still not know what I'm talking about? Well, it's time for me to finally spell it all out for you. This is what I showed before. Right now it looks like an ordinary strange moth. But this time I'll do something else. I'll let you guess what I'm doing differently to get this different thing. However, it just zooms in a little closer this time. Not sure how this constitutes as an egg, except for the fact that it requires the keyboard. And that's the same animation you get when you look at it the normal way. So those are all the known easter eggs in Myst 3 Exile. They're kind of cute, but they're not too flashy. Now, because of things I talked about in the commentary series, I feel somewhat obligated to show some other things in the game as well, for the sake of completeness. The simplest thing I mentioned was that I never showed these full screen animations that play when you use the first linking book to Jananin on any of the lesson ages. I'm sure you're just dying to see them, so here we go. I guess the main appeal that this has is that you end up standing in the final spot in the animation, as if you were dropped off after the flight. Now why would I show all three if they're all the same? Maybe I'm actually trying to segue this topic into something else. Let's look at the door here. I don't actually know what this symbol represents, if anything. 
but I want to focus on the handle itself. Notice how it's an open window, so we'll be grabbing the same handle from either side of the door. We didn't have to press those buttons this time, so the door is obviously unlocked. Now let's come out here. Surely we'll be able to open it from out here too, since we're pulling the same handle, right? No, we're gonna have to enter the code again. I hope you wrote it down, because I didn't. Or we could go all the way around again. Anyway, this is just a logistical flaw. Let's go look at some real glitches now. I talked about these glitches in the commentary series. We are now, of course, at the last part of the Voltaic Ride. And remember I said one of the glitches shows up only on the second and successive visits. As you can see, I already have the Voltaic symbol. Now you can clearly hear the music reset to playing Voltaic's theme. Ideally, it would play either this or its ambient knockoff for all eternity. But instead, it's going to advance to the other ambient tracks each time we step out and back onto the airship node. See, now it's playing the music that's only supposed to be heard when exactly one puzzle on Voltaic is solved. And we can keep doing this. Now it'll act like we got two puzzles solved. If only it was that simple in general. Now it's going to remain stuck here at level 3, but listen closely when I try it again. See, it faded out and then faded back in. This is exactly what happens when you solve the fourth puzzle too, as if it's changing it again, but to the same track. Okay, now for the big door. This is the one that requires the second trip. Do you remember in that other video what I said's gonna happen? Well, first the door is here, and now it isn't. Or, as I explained it before, the door was never there and it was just an illusion. I guess I don't need to go down there this time. We've already seen all we need to see. Here's what the big doorway looks like from the backside. Kinda neat looking. Watch out. <laughs> Okay, now the door works properly, at least until we link around again. Alright, on to Amateria now. Okay, this is just another trivial thing I'm obsessing about, only because I mentioned it in the commentary series. Right now I have a large amount of weight placed on that side of the scale, just like I did at the end of part 24. But now I'm going to do this. This makes the scale heavily favor that left side. If I had known about this back then, I probably would have handled it differently. Oh, I forgot to right click. See, now I could say something like, Oh, look! I almost have it! But let's leave anyway! Or some crap like that. Remember, I still haven't shown you the link back to Jananin from here yet.
It's easy to get lost in the middle of all these rocks. I just kind of memorize which rocks to click on. You can see it's not quite the same as the other two. It almost looked like it may have adjusted the landing point to compensate for the missing floor. Now I got something to say about this tusk door too. First of all, notice that it's stuck permanently open. Recall that it has to be opened as part of the puzzle to get the giant weight rolling in here. But when I was exploring the resource files, I found a whole collection of bink files showing these doors opening. They had all the combinations from either side of the door. The weight may be here, the cage might be up or down. Well, you can't have the cage down and the weight not present, but it had the three other combinations while opening it from the outside, as well as the two possibilities for the weight from the inside. But oddly enough, there were no files showing the doors close, and I've never found them closed upon returning at any point in the game either. So it seems to me only the original one can ever be accessed in the game. And I think the flyby is good evidence they need to keep the doors open too. You can see the ramp behind us in that reflection on the wall, which proves once and for all that we are in fact invisible. Alright, it's time for me to load that last saved game now. However, there's an extra glitch in the unpatched version I want you to see over there. So let me pull that up right quick. <laughs> again. Just like before, you can see I've already picked up the symbol for this age, so this is a return trip. Right now it appears the stairs are stuffed back in the corner, something that supposedly happened to allow the ride to go through the first time. But are the stairs really there? Only a pre-rendered game is going to have issues like this since it doesn't truly understand all the different objects in a pseudo 3D environment. Oh yeah, let's look at this too. Yeah, that doesn't quite have the same grandeur as Voltaic. This time the stairs will roll out, however, I never heard them roll back to the corner, so it still isn't perfect. But that's not all. There are a couple more things up the stairs. In the Let's Play series, I looked at the ceiling from this node here. It gives a pretty clear view of all the inner workings of the cupola. Now it might just be me, but I get a different impression of all that stuff from this other node. What do you think? I think I feel a draft in here. See how the view snapped upward after the fade was finished? It started off trying that node preservation thing, but I can't look that far down while I'm sitting in the chair. So if you really want to see that part of the node, you have to... look quickly. Yeah, let's focus on something more interesting. Um... In the commentary series, I said something about looking back down the stairs from this node, but I just did that. I guess you can see why I didn't bother, it's not that great. But there was something else. 
It may have been the door back here. It's the one that leads to the spider spinner, so it's never used. In the cupola puzzle, it looks like one of the tracks might lead to it, but you can see it down here, so that's obviously not the case. Wait a minute, I remember what I was going to say now. The spider spinner's color is blue, right? But when I look up, I see yellow. And the door to the final platform behind us is supposed to be red, but here it shows as green. So apparently this thing has been rotated 90 degrees. Or, I guess the other way. This could work out okay, but only if the whole thing rotates back as we ascend. So let's see. Well, two things apparently went wrong right there. First and foremost, the cupola didn't rotate. That bink file showed the wrong position of the colors the whole way. And secondly, we got some weird artifacts resulting from this puzzle not resetting as it should. That's the one that's only present in this version, though. It's not quite as much fun talking about glitches that they actually went back and fixed, but it still looked funny enough to show anyway. Hey, I can use this now. See, it's the exact same video, just playing in reverse. Well, that's all I have for you. Not the most glamorous ending for my coverage of Myst 3, but I feel I've covered everything sufficiently now. So I thank you for your time once again.